Hey, it's Skippy from Mornings with Lone Star. You're listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZWLP Conroe and 106.1 KZCCLP Conroe and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. Shall we begin? Let's begin now. Hello and welcome to the Ticket Stub, your favorite place for movie news and reviews. My name is Connor. I'm one of the hosts of the show, and I'm joined in the Lone Star Community <laughs> Studio by my good friend Chris Appel. How you doing, Chris? Fabul. And Dick Schistler. What? I don't know. It's French or something. Dick, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. All right. Well, this is the Ticket Stub. We come live every Thursday on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area worldwide at IRLoneStar.com slash TTS. You can find out all of our information, social media, interact with the show. As always, we want to encourage you to, to, to follow our Twitter at the underscore Ticket Stub and make sure you are subscribed to our to our podcast feed on whatever podcast network you use, uh, the Ticket Stub podcast. That way it'll drop every Friday at 8 a.m. And so when you wake up Friday ready to take on the day, the ticket stub will be there to help you do it. So we're pretty excited about that, right? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Thank <laughs> you for the interaction, guys. Wait, um, what show is this? The ticket stub. Okay, let's make sure. Oh, and we're also we're brought to you by the movie tavern. Movies never tasted so good. That's so right. good. So, so, so good. So well, I'm good. battling with a little bit of the of the junk right now with the allergies and everything out there <laughs> with the weather changing. Every two minutes, but we're going to power through. Hopefully, I don't cough too much during the show. I'll just make sure to do it all over the microphone. I, I will. Yeah, I'm going to contaminate. Whoever uses this next is going to be dead, basically. But we got a great show coming up. Uh, we are going to rewind. <laughs> oh. yeah, we are going to rewind the movies that we've seen from the last week. We're going to talk about some movie news, and we're going to do a little activity, a little game called Double Take, where we talk about movies that have come out the same year. <laughs> a That's little activity. A little activity. From Highlights Magazine. A little fun activity. Yeah. Uh, where we look at movies that came out the same year with the same plot and try to figure out which is the better of the two. We're also going to give away two tickets to the Grand Theater this week, which we do every week. Grand Theater and Movie Tavern uh, here on the Ticket Stuff. Movies so- never tasted so good. Mm. I think I thought we had to do that every time we say yeah, Movie Yeah, we tavern. added that part, right? Yeah. No, every, oh. every time you say Movie Tavern, you have to say Movies Never Tasted So Good. Okay, that'll be like our little We're thing. contractually obligated. Yeah, all right. Well, Dick, you handle that part. Uh, so we're going to do all that great stuff today. And uh, if you, again, if you want two tickets to the Grand Theater or the Movie Tavern. Movies never tasted so good. Then make sure you, uh, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to the show, follow us on Twitter, and uh, we'll be giving out a question at the end of the show that will ha- give you the opportunity to win. All right, we're going to hop in. Everybody's doing good, right? Yep, check. All right, check. we're going to hop Everyone's right. doing great. Yep. Okay, perfect. On to the next movie news. Some good stuff to talk about today. Deadline.com. Had, a, had an article about Redbox and Disney are in a feud right now. No, I didn't know anything mm. about this. Did, Chris, did you know about this? I didn't know. So basically with what, what's happening, you know, Dick, you know when you buy a DVD, it'll come in the multi-pack with the regular DVD, the Blu-ray, and the digital download code. Yes. So Redbox has been triple dipping on this. Triple dipping. They're buying the thing. They're renting. Using, they're renting the Blu-ray. They're renting the regular DVD, and they are selling the digital code. Now, first off, I guess I'm stupid. I didn't even realize that Redbox just bought the DVDs. And then, like, I thought maybe they had a deal or something, you know? I don't... <laughs> yeah, that, that, it seems a no, little odd to me. Blockbuster was the same way. They bought it straight Did out. They? Yeah. Okay, see, I, I guess I never had thought about how that whole economy worked. I figured they maybe had a deal with the companies or something. But I guess why would the companies want to work with Redbox, maybe? Well, uh, I don't know. Because if I remember correctly, when the VCR first came out, there was a huge a story in Dick lawsuit here. about being able to copy... And it became like they almost prevented Sony doing betas and they prevented, uh, I think it was Mitsubishi who did the VHS or was it? Yeah. But like basically all the major f- film companies like, no, we can't make VCRs because basically you can put a blank tape and go on TV and put record and record anything and it's going to cause a huge chaos. But then they got over it and there was like there was a law about renting because it became when Bobbuster started to come up in the late 80s. Because they, people were starting to rent stuff. Because that was never normal. Yeah. Renting didn't happen until VHS was made. I guess that makes sense. What would you rent? And then the, about the ownership of the tapes. So you can only rent an officially purchased licensed yeah. copy, I guess. Mm. So but what so what Redbox has been doing is... The, and, and the funny part is you have to actually go to the physical Redbox. And, the, and that kiosk can only sell the promo codes that they're loaded with. So like if you wanted to buy a promo code for... You know, for Black Panther, the reason this came out again is because Disney's been fighting with Redbox to get them to stop. 
And Disney lost the first lawsuit they brought up or whatever. The judge ruled against them. Well, they changed all the wording in their licensing now that says that you can only sell or the code can only be redeemed by the person who purchased the the DVD pack in the first place, which I don't know how you're ever going to enforce that. But it's because Black Panther is about to come out. Right. And so they know that Redbox is about to buy 100 billion copies of Black Panther yeah. and make a ton of money on the digital well, downloads. Because the issue with it, too, is not just Redbox. Think of it as it's similar to the uh, pawn shop a code law or whatever, because I remember doing that with video games. And a lot of people had problems with that with video games because they changed the law where you had to be 18 to actually go in and trade your video games in the GameStop. Hmm. Because it was now regarded, like they changed the law where now it was regarded as a pawn shop instead of just like a resale store. Okay. So the same thing with Redbox, probably someone's going to go down on like that kind of wording where you, they Disney can't stop them from reselling it. They're not. It seems like it's going to be difficult, but it's just, I don't know. To me, it's just funny the idea that you would go to the Redbox kiosk and purchase a code for it. I, I don't know. It's, it's or they just go on eBay with it. I mean, that's, yeah, that's yeah. ultimately yeah. what's going to happen. Right. They just don't use Redbox as a username. They just say John. Well, I guess it's kind of like. Solid it, name, John. Is it like proprietary or something? I mean, because we, like, let's say uh, where we run out of beer at the theater. We can't go to the gas station and buy a beer and then resell it. We've got to well, go it, through different it, it all, well, specific actually, vendors. You can't it depends, do that. It really? depends on your yeah. license. It depends on your license. Okay. So yeah. why is it that you couldn't do that? I, I don't know. I mean, that's what the, the law is, is my okay. understanding. Well, so liquor, is, uh, liquor is a controlled substance in a sense of, like, you ever, if you go to the bar where they you get a, a shot or whatever, and, like, it's the last of the, the bottle, and they have to hit it a couple yeah. times, basically saying it's been used so they can't resell it, they can't refill it. Yeah. And that's the whole idea is that way they don't get in trouble if someone takes the bottle from the trash. And But that's different than going to the gas station and buying sealed beer. Though. Well, no, because it, it's, it's right. controlled. Could you go to, like, Sam's Club and buy a pallet of... No, you, can't, people you will, can't. So that must be a commercial license then, because people will do that for, like, a wedding, say, right? You might go to costco like, yeah but they're not I mean, they're not selling you the can't read the wedding. well i guess maybe that's true they're giving yeah. it away i guess right yeah. actually that's considered fraud how's that doing fraud? what you're talking about why because like for example say i go and they you know this sam's club's having an ultimate deal on mayonnaise or whatever you want to resell i mean say yeah. water bottles say water <laughs> say bottles. no more well say water bottles <laughs> okay and then you buy them and then you go to your convenience store that you own and you resell those same water bottles for more, for more. I mean, that's. Kind I of, don't know why that's. That's illegal. kind of what business is, though. Yeah, it's I know, just but it is. It's, yeah, I mean, it's just not buying it from Sam's. It's buying it from. So I guess this is the same thing, really. Because there actually guess. there was a couple in Austin that got busted because they're using food stamps, and they were taking people's food stamps, buying it at Sam's, and then reselling it in their convenience <laughs> store. Oh wow! Well, anyways, we'll see. Uh, interesting to see how this goes. Honestly, I haven't visited Redbox in a while, so this doesn't affect me too much. Um, I don't know. I'd rather pay the three dollar rental to Red online. So we get a code. I mean, because you can get those codes online for really cheap, and it's probably. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no law against reselling them. Well, they're trying to make one. So, Disney. Disney is yeah. trying to. Disney's trying to write this new or that what they've written in their terms of service is only the person who bought the code or their like direct family are able to redeem it. I don't know how enforceable that is. But well, what you do this is this is how you get around it is you you put uh, an activation on, oh, I guess he's drawn every single disc that's unique to that code. Yeah, that'd be terrible. And so, yeah, that kind of sucks. All right. Well, Variety.com uh, had an article out that said that Infinity War, the new Marvel movie, is, uh, I wrote reselling, is pre-selling more than the last seven Marvel movies combined. Right, is is the uh, Grand taking pre-sale tickets right now? Yeah, we when, sure What is the movie go, May? Uh, the 26th is when of it May, comes right? Out. No, of this month. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, A couple shoot. weeks. So yeah, in fact, I, for some reason, I thought it was this weekend, but yeah, it's a couple weekends away. Now, still. what what everybody has to keep in mind about the being seven times higher than all the other movies combined okay. Bring is us that, some perspective. Well, here. there's a lot more theaters that have the assigned seating, that have the recliners. Their capacity is a lot less. Okay. So people are starting to become accustomed now to, to pre buying to pre buying oh. tickets to make sure they have a seat. So this, that number isn't entirely accurate. That's probably a great point because I will say. That you have to, it's changed the way you think about going to the movies. It really does. For the yeah. theaters that have the limited seating. Because it is amazing, like, week, you know, weeknights. You, you could go to, a like, a Tuesday night movie that is at those, if it's a new release still, you know, mm -hmm. fairly new, and you may not be able to find a spot or you're wedged in between, you know, you couldn't get two together type thing. So, yeah, when they go down to, like, a third capacity or whatever yeah. it takes to put those luxury recliners in, that definitely does change it. Um, but it's just, it, it's interesting. I don't know. What does that do for the overall 
ceiling of what these movies can make. Because, I mean, Black Panther came out in the same war. I mean, that was two months ago or whatever right. it was. It made, it, uh, to date, it's $667 million. So apparently there were still people seeing that in theaters. Is there a chance that this movie is going to be bigger than that one? Uh, what, what do you think? I mean, it should be. I mean, well, isn't that the biggest superhero movie of all time? I think Black Panther is one of, if not the. It's yeah. like one of the top gross. No, there's all the people who adjust for inflation or whatever, but right. I don't. My brain can't do that math. So right, yeah. No, no. I mean, it should be. I mean, it has everything, and it has Black Panther in there as well. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you like hey, Black Panther, he's yeah. going to be in this one. Right. So yeah. If, you, so if the only reason you went to see Black Panther was for Chadwick Boseman. You're gonna go see this. Oh, one that's as why well. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't know. It's got all the guys. It's never got... movies never tasted so good, guys. Four D, four D experience. Oh, that's bad. Uh, uh. So it's got all the superheroes. So if you liked any of, well, I, I do you, feel like if you liked any of the other movies, would you say this is the biggest movie of this year? I mean, could I mean potentially could be? I'm talking about just you know, I like, I might even see it. I think it is. Yeah, T ticket I sales. I would have to, I would have to imagine. Well, unless Black Panther stays, but this would have no. to be. I think it's going to beat it. it I, again, I just feel like all the other Marvel movies have been so big, right. and this is kind of the ultimate Marvel movie, right? It's well, will be interesting to see how long it's in theaters because the month the month literally like three days later, Solo is coming out. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see. This will be in the, this will be like a six week plus movie, probably right. As far as oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna handily beat Solo for sure. Yeah, I would think. Well, so my my question is, how much does the quality of the movie determine how successful it's gonna be financially? Well, I don't think there's been a disappointing Avengers movie. Yeah, they're all pretty. You mean the actual Avengers, not not the individual characters, but the assembly of the Avengers right. when they're all together. Yeah. Well, I, no, I mean, the, the greatest example you can give for the, like an answer to that question is look at the DC universe is like, it's all about the next one. So if this one does horrible, like it's a, it's a crappy movie. Well, they still might make a lot of money because people are still going to see it. But the next one, you're not going to have like, you know, the, the pre-registered tickets and stuff like that. Cause people are like, man, that last one sucked. Cause justice league, remember when justice league came out like that, did almost as bad as like because i know suicide squad bought it real down yeah and that is my movie that i'm rewinding oh, hey, justice league oh, justice league, oh, justice league. Yeah. Okay. but yeah i mean that's part of the reason why i did so horribly because the last one like man these movies suck ben affleck sucks and also marvel has so much momentum behind it also where dc i feel like has no momentum i mean it's like every time they're fighting uphill and they just can't seem to get a win the marvel movies they're almost uh, and i guess it's just because they do they've consistently done a good job with them but they have positive feelings going from the start well maybe it's like. because marvel seems to be a more happy universe and dc is like so dark it's so dark and, and maybe that's just what's not translating i guess except for the batman movies that you know there was a while where everything was gritty you know oh, yeah and maybe dc i feel like they're a little bit behind well, or something it, what is the dc batman the new one wasn't they wasn't that supposed to come out by this time i think they, ben, decided, they filmed it well, he decided was, not to do one ben affleck was gonna direct it then he is no, now they, he's not they filmed but, they filmed i remember seeing something with deadshot like that okay. was a big deal yeah i do remember that and like they announced to deadshot he was on location for two weeks or whatever filming for the batman movie hmm. so i don't I'm know a, i'm gonna look it up it, it has not come out i'll tell you that it is not uh <laughs> it has not been released but uh maybe i, mean, I don't even, I haven't even heard a preview for it so i don't know yeah, what no, the deal there's is not with that but uh anyways yeah, marvel they seem to be a little more fun they, they don't take themselves Quite as seriously, mm -hmm. probably more enjoyable, probably better, better action, better plot. I don't know. It's just it's interesting to see how that goes. But this should be, like you said, the biggest movie of the year, box office wise. I think so. I think I think it's there's pretty much no contest. Okay, well, we'll see how it goes. I hope it's good. Also, <laughs> you know, I hope it is also mm -hmm. uh, good. The other ones have been. It seems pretty cool. I don't know. Whenever you have a scene with huge groups of people running at each other in battle, I'm pretty excited. You know that that, that gets me going. <laughs> Uh, that was like the thing about Ready Player One that I was all pumped about was yeah. huge scene of battle, two giant forces running yep. at each other, Marvel, yep. you know, and, and what's, what's cool is in this one, it's, you know, it, the little screenshot they take, which also, stupid. this is a brief side note, if you were going to have a battle with all of the superheroes of the world, would you put them all in one small group for a giant battle or would you kind of spread them throughout the battle, right? Or is there an army involved or is it? Yeah, it's a huge army. Or is this like Dragon Ball Z where like no, it's they're like, all fighting one-on-one? -on -one. No, it's not Dragon Ball Z-esque. It's a huge army of people. I mean, if you've seen the trailer for Infinity War, there's like 100,000 people right. on their team fighting the bad guys, but all the good guys are in one little cluster. Why wouldn't they spread out? It seems like they're kind of defeating the, like they can all kill like 100 at a time. Maybe it was yeah. unplanned. 
Oh, maybe so. They're like, oh, man, we're here already, and there's millions of people around us. Well, let's go at it. Or maybe their teamwork is the secret. <laughs> their teamwork is the secret to their power, their unity. I'm just I kidding. don't know. Who cares? Maybe it's going right. to suck. <laughs> All right, we got to go to break. When we come back, we're going to. It's going to suck. When we come back, we are going to rewind the movies that we've seen from last week. Later in the show, we're going to give away two tickets to the Grand, and we're going to play a game called Double Take. So stick with us here on the Ticket Stub. The Ticket Stub is brought to you in part by Movie Tavern. Movies, meals, margaritas. These are all things you may be familiar with, but get ready to be reacquainted. Because Movie Tavern is revolutionizing the way America experiences eating, drinking, and cinema. We're doing it by providing a robust in-theater dining service, featuring chef-driven menus, premium quality food and drink, and luxurious seating that completely transforms your movie-going experience. Whether you're looking to spend your date night, family night, or girls' night out here, you'll get the premium, affordable experience you're looking for. Movie Tavern. Movies never tasted so good. We're back on the ticket stub. This is not a drill. Oh, yeah. This is not a drill. Movies never taste so good. Movies never. never, Ticket stub brought to you by Movie Tavern. Movies never taste so good. If you missed the first segment, we talked movie news. We talked Redbox selling DVDs, uh, download codes, and Marvel Infinity War. Why did we think of that? We should have. Because, I mean, let's just start doing it now. And we'll just give them away. Give them away. Yeah, for for, for our listeners, for our stubbies. First. So we'll buy the code and then give them away to our stubbies? Yeah. Uh, I guess or we buy the DVD at least. Yeah, but then we just have a bunch of DVDs. Maybe we should give them the DVD and we keep the We code. keep the download code. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the past. We're living in the future. Digital downloads. Get some laser discs for people. Tax deductible. Really <laughs> tax deduct- Can we write that off? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know about taxes. All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to rewind. This is the part of the show where we talk about the movies that we've seen over the last week. Dick, you saw a movie. I did. I did see a movie. I. Uh, what's funny is I saw Jack Reacher. The first one. Yes. And. Is your life forever different? It was so much better than the, the new one. Because I've seen the new one. Why the newer you, one. Why would you watch them out of order? Because They're just, so plot dependent. I, I'm, I'm more. I'm what I'm dependent on is if it's available for free. That's what I'm dependent on. Okay. And uh, the, yeah, what's what's weird to me is the, the sequel, Never Look Back. I think that's what it's called. Is it called Never Look Back? Jack Reacher. Jack Reacher. Sounds like an album. I think that's right, though. Yeah. Never Never go back. Never stop. That's another. Never stop. Never stop. Is that Justin Bieber album? I don't really know. No. Well, that that pop star movie was Never Stop, Never Stopping. That's actually I actually saw that movie. That's a great movie. That's a great movie. But uh, the first why I do this. This Jack Reacher. (laughs) What's funny is the this one was just so much well better or so much better in a sense of like the actual plot even though yeah. the plot was somewhat sim- simple but which one was about the sniper this is the first one yeah this was a good one like it was good okay. i was i was intrigued and it was very easy to follow which you know as i get older i'm losing my mind was the second one where the girl goes missing uh somebody yeah that the, well that's that's in the middle of the movie okay whatever sorry the Continue. girl the girl from that stupid show how i, I met your mother, mother. Yeah. yeah i hope she died she oh. didn't though <laughs> i was Goodness. really waiting for i was like yes dang hatred it, what which, it, which girl Colby Smulders. Oh, Colby Smulders. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She should die in the Marvel Universe, too. Oh, I forgot. Is she like one of the agents or something? She's yeah. on, yeah, of S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She should fall out of a plane and they don't catch her. Oh. <laughs> I'm oh. just kidding. Dang. <laughs> no, that's reserved for Josh Gad. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so what do you think of uh, Jack Reacher? I would say definitely check it out. Uh, I watched it. I think it was on FX. So uh, I would definitely. Sounds about right. I would definitely watch it right now. Like the the stop, everyone stop. Yeah, watch it right now. Never go back. Never and go back. Uh, never stop. Never stopping. Because the the whole thrill, like the, the whole thing, was really well done. It reminded me a lot of like a simpler Mission Impossible. Yeah. But then, uh, and it it was somewhat believable and somewhat intriguing about this Jack Reacher drifter character. And I was kind of like, they could probably make six movies of this guy. But, oh, don't worry, they will. And uh, but I would definitely check it out. Yeah. What do you think of uh oh what's the old like a uh, Russian dude uh, oh the uh, the prisoner yeah he's a famous director uh Wanya Herzog yeah Warner, Warner, Warner Herzog Warner Herzog oh yeah the Zach. you know he directed a documentary about some murders here in Conroe Texas did he really he sure did it's well, really good it, what's it called it out. you don't know uh, it's, uh, I'm looking it up right now okay it's really I, good I, I know that he is like a legendary director in a lot of ways and stuff like that 
he, he was terrible in that movie, would you say? Yeah, yeah, I think on Death Row. Is the no, show. that's not it. That's not it. Not it. How many does he do? Uh, a say? lot. That's all he, he's, he's no, like in the movie, like, and that's one thing I I would he didn't love. Think that he was like distracting and bad. No, I thought he was really good, but I think the thing that's kind of stuck about uh, that I was kind of stinked, I stunk about the Stink. plot. Stunk. What kind of stuck about the plot is they didn't go any more into his character because it was just kind of like he ate his fingers. He chewed all his fingers and, off, and he's man. really hardcore. But they never really got. They never went into like why are they doing fingers, why they're doing all what they're doing because the plot itself was really cool because yeah. basically. This construction company is going through different cities and basically blackmailing their way to getting contracts, and then they leave, yeah. and they never finish the projects. But then, like, it was it, was he the mastermind? I think so. But like, he didn't really seem like he had any input besides just being a cold Dude, you killer. Off, man. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying he would That's, do anything, whatever so it takes. I was interested because I, I was when I when I saw the sequel, I thought it was a sequel, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna learn more about. Wow, how this plot line got started, but no, they're totally separate. Yeah. And I was really disappointed in that. Really, the only, the only carryover is Jack Reacher and the girl. That's pretty much the only thing that... No, the Rosemary Pike or whatever wasn't in the... No, I'm talking about uh, Colby Smolders. She wasn't in this one. Was she not? No. Yeah, I thought she was the girl he talked to or whatever. No, that's Rosemary Pike. Oh, Rose, The more Rosemary. attractive yeah. female in the, this one. I, I will say that. They did that really well. Yeah. Hats off to them. <laughs> Reacher! Into the Abyss is the Werner Herzog documentary about the murders here in Conroe, Texas. All right. We need to check that one out. Yes. All right, Chris, what did you watch this week? Well, I watched Justice League. Okay. Sap and Wolf. Sap and Wolf. Yeah. Questionable choice. Unnamed. I'm sure it's somebody from the comic. Yeah. It but, is. but terrible. Yeah. Name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was, know it's a band. I was surprised I chose him as the villain because yeah. he's not like no one knows who that is. And in the that would be a good band name, Sap and Wolf. If you were like a hardcore metal like scream band, it is a band. It is a band? I, I think yes. oh, well, Wolf is a band. Oh, well, there we go. Yes, it, I'm yes. a genius. If I had to guess, the fact that the Joker did so poorly on screen with Jared Leto, he was like, right after that, like, no, we can't have him as the main villain in, in the Justice League movie. Oh, my word. Well, they needed, like, a god. Like The problem with the superhero movies no, is— No, they don't. Well, well, the problem with the superhero movies is they're all indestructible— so what are you going to do? Well that's, the beauty, well, that's the beauty of the Joker character because the Joker character doesn't like come at you with force. He comes at you with uh, dilemmas. With mental games. Yeah, similar to what they that's tried. That's why the Dark Knight was so good. That's yeah. why the Dark Knight was like an amazing movie. And so it imagine, really you know, because he kind of had that in Batman vs Superman a little bit because it's like, oh, the Marthas. But it wasn't a, a large scale. That was stupid. <laughs> that was dumb. Do you, think if, do you think if Heath Ledger hadn't died, the whole DC universe would be different? No, nah. no, probably not because Christopher Nolan still wouldn't be a part of it. That's true. Good point. Yeah, but we, I we think I think Bane would have had a better death scene. Yeah, because he kind of just died. You know what I'm talking about? Well, he, ripped, he ripped his little tubes off. No, he got no, hit he by got a car. Sh- yeah, he got, no, oh, he got shot. He I got, mean, he just he ran. Got, like, yeah, he got shot and yeah. then ran over by a bicycle. But some <laughs> of it was because they pulled his little face tubes off. That hurt yeah. him. That hurt him a lot. Yeah. But, All right. What do you think about Justice League? I it was not good. No, ungood. No, it was not good. It was way too busy. A lot I mean, happening. What? Yeah. A lot okay. happening. You got. I'm a, I'll Everything was red. Just off the top of my head. Superman. Batman. Wonder Woman. Alfred. Aquaman. Aquaman. The black robot dude. Uh, Wonder Woman's tribe. <laughs> Aquaman's <laughs> tribe. Who, who had Amber Heard for some reason. Hey, no no, no problem there. Uh, yeah. It, uh, b- the Marthas. 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 You do, it's too much for one movie. Yeah, you know, and I'm a big fan of like movies that are short, and this was two hours. So you would think that that I would like it, but it was so much crammed into Well, so how do Avengers do it? Because they cram more people into their movies, but it seems to work. Well, I don't well, I think it's the actors. I don't think they're well, interesting they do, at all. They and do the writing the, uh, is bad. The writing is bad. They do the Star Wars element well in the Avengers where there's like three plot points going on. Yeah. And they're they keep it simple enough where you can kind of foresee the connection. And when they finally get the payoff at the end when they all get together you're like oh this is great but yeah. not in that justice league and, yeah and and jason moma i'm not sure what that deal was there it it looks like whenever he's got his shirt off it looks like he's like got balloons uh underneath like some sort of skin membrane like it just doesn't look right <laughs> like boobs <laughs> <laughs> Yes. No. He has very boobies. Never. Oh, no, no, no. He has no, no, no. very balloonish. So he has very balloonish okay, now, features. It, it, do they have to get all roided up? There's no way he could look like that if he wasn't doing steroids. Oh, you're so jealous right him, now. Him, Your jealousy yeah. is oh, so yeah. apparent. What about yeah. Superman? Can Superman not look roided up? He's an he alien. He is roided up. Yeah. What about Chris Evans when he had his shirt off in that one Captain I, America movie? I'm sure. Probably. And all that weight he lost in the first one to look skinny. 
That was steroids. Yeah. All steroids. That was, all, that was that steroids. Was reverse <laughs> steroids. That was, That's what I did. Yeah. But uh, Ben Affleck is awful. He's terrible. As there was a time where he was maybe a decent actor, but it is not today. No, he is. It is rough. He, what he should have done is he should have been the dad. That way we could see him die a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Was Superman's dad? Yeah. No. No, uh, Batman's, Batman's dad. dad. Shot, in, oh, shot yeah. in an alley. That's true, yeah. Oh, the man. one thing I need is another scene of Batman's parents getting killed in another Batman movie. Or have Sean Bean do it. Isn't he dying every movie? Sean, oh, Sean, yeah. yeah. So not good. Not good. And Steppenwolf, was he a very forgettable bad guy? Yes. Very forgettable. Very much. I like the actor that played him. Uh, he his name was it an actor or was it a computer? It, it was a guy's voice. Compactor. Uh, I forget what his name is. It's Syrian something. He was in Some of All Fears with Ben Affleck, which I actually do like Ben Affleck in that movie. Uh, but he was he's like one a of the polarizing Russian actor. Guys. It sucks. For he him. is. It though. sucks to be him. Man. He is. Who Ben Affleck? Yeah, because he's like he is in legit good movies, and then well, he he was. That's my thing. Is that, I mean, has he been in a good one lately? Do you think it's just because of the direction of the DC Gone universe? Girl. Like the people who are in charge of the Gone Girl was good. That's right. Of the DC universe, there's just everything's a hit. I, mean, I, I think mean. the mistake they made was when they tried to make it like Avengers. Don't don't do that. Just do your own thing. I mean, the DC. Uh, universe is so dark and the Batmans before that were so dark just go ahead and stay with that and don't try to like camp it up to try to keep up with Avengers uh, I thought Man of Steel was a good movie you know if they could have just capitalized on that kind of stuff yeah it was okay so. it was okay for whatever reason they just none of them do it for me well Superman I that to me is one of the hardest movies superhero movies to make because of the large scale of it Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a dude who can fly. So imagine f filming half the movie this dude flying around. That's gonna be—it's impossible to make it look great because it's just I, not. Superman normal. Returns. It, I really like that movie. Yeah, I but I mean, even movie. the flying scenes look bad though. Like it's just. No. -uh. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. When he when he when he caught the airplane. Oh, okay. That looked pretty bad. Well, all in all, Justice League. How did you watch it? I watched it on uh, my Roku Voodoo movies. Voodoo, Roku. do that Voodoo you do, mm -hmm. Roku. Because yeah. I had not put my new debit card into Amazon yet. So it was free free on Voodoo Roku? No, I had to pay for it. Oh, okay. Oh, you didn't get the code from Redbox? I didn't get the code. You no. should have. Then you could yeah. own it forever. Yeah. What a joy. No, watch you. it again and again and again. And <laughs> yes, again. yes. Well, I, they're probably going to make more of these Justice Leagues. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Can't, can't wait. I mean, it still made money. Well, yeah. yeah okay, no, whatever. Just... You're such a heartless. All you care about is the industry. You don't care about the art. Oh, well, I wish there was a little more art into, into it, honestly. But yeah. I wish people would come see art. So they usually don't. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part. Yeah, it makes like a hundred thousand dollars. Yep. What's the call me by your name? Right. That's beautiful art. Uh, I don't not. know. We'll see. I don't. Yeah. I never saw that one. But no. the one that people did come see is the one that you're going to talk about. Yeah. Hey, oh yeah. But we're going to do that after break because it's already time for the bottom of the hour break. When we come back, we will. Uh, I will talk about a quiet place. Ooh, very good. And then we'll play double take. We'll also give away two tickets to the Grand Theater. So stick with us here on the Ticket Stub. The Ticket Stub is brought to you in part by Movie Tavern. Movies, meals, margaritas. These are all things you may be familiar with, but get ready to be reacquainted. Because Movie Tavern is revolutionizing the way America experiences eating, drinking, and cinema. We're doing it by providing a robust in-theater dining service, featuring chef-driven menus, premium quality food and drink, and luxurious seating that completely transforms your movie-going experience. Whether you're looking to spend your date night, family night, or girls' night out here, you'll get the premium, affordable experience you're looking for. Movie Tavern. Movies never tasted so good. We're back on the Ticket Stub. Every week, we're live on Thursdays on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area and worldwide on IRLoneStar.com. You can go to IRLoneStar.com slash TTS and find out everything you want to know about the show. Uh, we also give away two tickets to the Grand Theater and Movie Tavern. We are sponsored by Movie Tavern. Movies never tasted so good. We give away two tickets every week. Last week, the question to win the tickets was, uh, in honor of the movie Blockers, with a uh, rooster image next to it. They're, uh, John Cena and Ike Bernholtz were, the, were two of the stars of Blockers. This is their second collaboration. The question is, what was their first collaboration together? The answer was the movie Sisters with Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Kind of an underwhelming movie. It had a couple funny parts. I think John Cena was the best part of the movie, honestly, for me. But the winner is Karina Malden. So congrats. You, uh, you, you commented on the Facebook page, Karina, with the correct answer. 
So you will get those tickets. Uh, pretty excited about that. And we will give away, we'll have the question at the end of the show for how you can win two more tickets for next week. I, I do want to talk about my movie, A Quiet Place. No, Chris, you saw this one also. I sure did, yeah. Okay, so we can talk about this one together. I'll give you the details real quick. This is in theaters now. It was directed by John Krasinski, who you may know of Office fame as Jim Halpert and other things as well. Uh, starring John Krasinski, Emily Blunt. And there was two kids who were kind of really no names, I would say. Melissa Simmons and Noah Jupe. And uh, the IMDb plot says a family is forced to live in silence while hiding from creatures that hunt by sound. No, this is kind of limited storytelling, I would say. Most of the movie takes place kind of in this little farm mm -hmm. complex that they've built. Uh, and, and I think that you benefit a lot from not knowing a ton about this movie. Well, oh, ooh. absolutely. I think a lot of movies, there's a, a lot of time wasted in setup. Yeah. And that did, it just didn't happen in this one. Which I kind of like. Yeah, you I know? do too, yeah. They, they didn't have to. So, so, I mean, basically, it's some sort of a post-apocalypse. And they don't, again, they don't really even talk about it. Right. But I like that. You know, they didn't have mm -hmm. to do the whole, there wasn't even, a lot of movies will do the words on the screen where it's like, the year is 2059. O overpopulation caused to a drought, which caused a scientist farming in a new way, which yep. caused a genetic mutation. We don't get any of that. All we know is that here we are, mm -hmm. and something bad's happening. Yep. And that you have to use sign language or else you're going to die. That's basically, <laughs> that's, much, that's basically yeah. what we know. There are some kind of cool reveals, I thought, about the family and oh yeah, why can they all sign, you know, how do they get to where they are, uh, some of that kind of stuff. Did you feel a little bit of a signs vibe? Not to make too easy of a connection. No, here. I felt a Cloverfield vibe big time. Okay. Uh, I, I think this movie could easily slide into the Cro Cloverfield uh, lore. Really? Uh, oh, yeah. It was very, even the, the creatures looked very Cloverfieldy. Well, but like minus one million times scale, I guess. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I don't know. I just felt like, the, I guess the signs part for me was it was a family. There was a, these, I guess. We don't know if these are aliens, but there was a monster, yeah, a yeah. creature no, attack. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, yeah. There were sure. some kids involved, you know. Man, there were some parts of this that were intense. Definitely, yeah. But what I would say is this movie starts with a bang, all right? Mm -hmm. Starts with a bang and then kind of settles down. Yep. There's like a little 20-minute period in there where it's just kind of a day in the life. And then things happen. And it's just, it's relentless. Mm -hmm. It's about an hour, I would say, of relentless action. And if every day was like that, you would be like, all right, we'll just let the monsters kill me. Well, pretty much. Because yeah. I can't handle this at all. Um, I don't really like scary movies, but I would call this a thriller probably more. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was overly scary. Of course, you got your jump scares in there. But beyond jump scares, I don't think there's really anything. There's a couple of those. There was, the, I will say this, the, what was probably the creepiest part of the whole movie, there's a scene involving water and the monsters, the creature is there. And he like slides into the water like a like almost like an alligator would do mm -hmm. uh, off of the shore, and for whatever reason that creeped me out more than almost anything else. In the entire full movie. disclosure, I don't know why I should say this. I got diarrhea like right in the middle of the movie. Chris, are you so, kidding me? No, I did. I know I did. So I I did have to leave briefly during that part. But <laughs> that is by I'm, far. I'm sorry. I the greatest why. thing you I, said. I don't know why I told on you. the show. I don't know why I told you, but you probably could have just said you had to step out for a minute. <laughs> no, he didn't. I know. He <laughs> needed to tell us that. Or I had to go to the restroom. You didn't have to even maybe specify the extent of the restroom break you had to take. So you're telling me when you think I of suppose when you think of creatures sliding into the water. <laughs> and emerging he was sliding his own creature <laughs> into the water. you have a reaction to that <laughs> so when you see movies like lake placid and stuff oh you, don't even do you he, just he can't lose watch those. it is lose it yeah he yeah. can't even watch those right their yes. plumbing their, their septic cannot handle right. lake placid yes. my gosh. no yes that is noted i probably didn't well, have to uh, disclose you did not no, full but, disclosure. no thank you uh, thank you for doing it though but anyway so i missed that part oh bummer well but, that was a good part yeah. a creepy part I would say all in all, uh, despite what Chris just had to say, really good movie. Uh, definitely would encourage everyone to check it out. Uh, it's in theaters. I think, you know, movies like this, you could watch them at home with friends. But the theater experience, it's fun to be kind of scared as a group. The you know? only the only thing that I would say about seeing it in a theater is the movie is a quiet place. I mean, it's very silent. So you hear anything, people chomping on so, stuff. Funny and, story. You saw it at Star. I also saw it at Star Cinema yes, here in Conroe. I did. Well, I didn't really do the factor, the math of the quiet place. I saw it with Lindsay, my girlfriend, and we were there together. And we ordered pizza, but we also ordered an appetizer of nachos. Yeah, that's what I got too. Yeah, yeah mistake. Nachos, oh, they're delicious. I mean, don't get me wrong on that part. First, well, first off, it's hard to eat and like mix all the dipping in the dark. Yes. That's very difficult. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm sitting in the, one of the leather chairs, 
And I know I'm a crazy person, but every time <laughs> I would like shift weight at all, it would make like the leather creaky sound because yeah. the movie's silent. Right. And then I'm <laughs> every every bite I took, I felt the most self conscious I could ever feel. Uh, so don't yeah. order nachos at the Star Cinema Grill if you go see Quiet Place. Yeah, but it is really good. I, I really like it. it is. A lot. And I feel like in general the the last few months minus Black Panther have been kind of rough for movies for most people. But I feel like it's, we're kind of at the point where the movies are starting to come out that I think you're going to be able to more consistently say there's something really good in the theaters right now as we kind of head into the summer and all the big movies come out. So uh, this is a fun time of year where I feel like it kind of takes the turn mm -hmm. for a lot of the cool movies. So, all right. Well, Quiet Place, go check it out. Uh, Chris, you talked about Justice League. Dick, you saw Jack Reacher. So I'd say don't see Justice League, Jack Reacher, yes. Yeah, for Quiet sure. Place, yes. All right. We're going to do something called Double Take. So here's the premise. I, I ran across an article on my favorite website, mentalfloss.com, right? We all homepage that one, I'm sure. But it was talking, I just had this thought as I was uh, preparing for the show this week, that you know how it seems like there's a trend where a studio gets an idea and all of a sudden there's like several of those things that happen all, you know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. like dragons. Oh, okay, well now we need 10 dragon movies that all come out like in two years. Yeah. Well, and I then mean, we don't have a dragon movie for I five think, years after I that. think right now the big movie was All Money in the World. And now there's like an FX series called yes. Spaghetti Guys or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there's like two, there's another uh, another made for TV movie about it too. Same plot, everything. But it's amazing how those will come in the waves. You know, it's huh. like all of a sudden it happens, and then there's three or four or five other things yep. exactly like uh, you know OJ Simpson. I feel like there was in the last couple of years there was a couple of OJ things that all hit mm -hmm. at about the same time. So movies seem to do that. So I found an article that had a list of several movies that came out the same year within a few months of each other that plots were very very similar. So I'm going to throw the movies out to you guys. I don't know if you've seen all of them or not, but I want y'all to try to pick and kind of maybe have a reason for why that's the better of the two, and then I'll give you the correct answer, which is the answer that I feel, uh, because I'm always right, obviously. Okay. So, okay, the first one, from 1998, two movies featuring an asteroid, Deep Impact and Armageddon. Of the two of those, which is the better movie? Well, I think uh, Armageddon. Armageddon has, an, has a Criterion version. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Is that, is that you just listen to the Criterion people? Yeah, totally. That's I'm a snob. Oh, are you? Okay. You that. And that was a, a Hans Zimmer score, if I'm not mistaken. This, yeah, and Steven Tyler, I believe. No, I'm just yeah, yeah, and Steven Tyler. <laughs> he did the he did the soundtrack. He did the one song. And Ben Affleck drives the same car that I have in the movies. So. What that monster rover thing on Mars or on the asteroid? Yeah, no, yeah, no, you no, have no. The, 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 the Steve Tyler little car. Yeah. Huh? He drives. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Oh, Gun man. Jokes. <laughs> I'll say Deep Impact was okay. Deep Impact was okay. But Armageddon is awesome. This is a lot. Yeah, that was, that's that a great was movie. Pre-Frodo, pre too. I'm starting you off easy here. <laughs> right? Yeah, pre-Frodo. Pre-Frodo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, I mean, Elijah Wood, to me, every time he's in a movie that's not Lord of the Rings, like he's either a child or he is an adult child. And I can't watch movies with him in it because I can't take it seriously. Yeah, I understand that. He kind of he 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 typecast himself a little bit. If you're going to be in the, like the biggest sci-fi movie as, as a Hobbit, that's going to be difficult to overcome. That Armageddon layup. Oh, I meant to read my little thing about it, but I forgot. Okay, well I'll do it for the next one. Armageddon is a layup. Uh, that was we're starting off easy. Okay? okay, we'll see if these get harder. Now the next one, 2013. We got a little bug for the White House being taken oh, over. Oh, that's right. So I'm, I'm gonna let me read my little blurb here. In, in 2013, two different movie studios released two different films about terrorist groups invading and taking over the White House. Released in March, Olympus Has Fallen features Aaron Eckhart uh, as the captured president with Gerard Butler as a Secret Service agent who recaptures the White House. That, that year, the other Save the Press effort, White House Down, featured Jamie Foxx as the president with Channing Tatum in the role as the Secret Service hopeful tasked with keeping him safe. So, did y'all see either of these? Do y'all remember anything about these? Which one was the better? Yeah, movie? I think they're two different movies. I mean, one, even though it's the same plot, one is very lighthearted. And okay. kind of like more campy, and that would be the Channing Tatum and White House Fox down. one. Yeah. And then you got the serious one from Ol the other Olympus guys. Has Fallen, yeah. Yeah. So from an acting standpoint, I think you'd have to say Olympus Has Fallen. Okay. Uh so I mean that's what I'm gonna go the with. The better movie was Olympus Has Fallen. The better one. Okay. Well, it's funny because y'all are both actually wrong. Uh White House Down is actually <laughs> the better movie out I of see. those two movies. How, how, hold on. how are we judging this again? By me. <clears throat> By what I just wrote ahead of time. Are you serious? You thought White House Down? I saw both of them. Yeah. He shoots a rocket launcher in White House Down. Like the, yeah, that get was, out of here. <laughs> dude, it was, here's the reason. They're both stupid. But at least White House Down was kind of funny and fun. Uh, if, you, if you're going to tell me that the Aaron Eckhart, Gerard Butler is like a hard-hitting like piece of acting, 
I'm not going to believe you. So you can't say that like you haven't seen the sequel then. <laughs> oh, London has fallen. Yeah, I actually did. That not. brings it all together. I actually, oh, does that connect all the pieces? <laughs> oh, yeah. exactly. oh well, no wonder. Okay, well, you have to watch it as two films. Oh, sorry, you have to see it as one story. Yeah, You're right. Yeah. Well, I didn't see. I started London has fallen, and I I can't, I quit it because it was so stupid. But uh, but neither of these are good, and I like the dumb action flicks. I mean, if you want the brainless action, they're both kind of equal in my opinion. The thing that sets White House down apart a little bit is that it at least has some funny parts. And I like Channing Tatum. Gerard Butler's okay, but... Uh, okay. Well, see, I think what's different between the movies, though, is, like, Tatum just seems... Uh, the, the, he doesn't seem like a Secret Service guy. Well, he's a hopeful. He's a ho he's trying to get on the, the service. And so, that's, that's how he wins the effect Gerard the Butler, don't, totally, like, that was all... That whole movie could be real. Well, me. that's true. That's true. I think it's the accent. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the accent's the only thing that really sets him apart, right? And oh. maybe the, the beard or, like, the goat, whatever facial hair he's got. All right, next up. 1997. Universal Pictures' volcano thriller Dante's Peak raked in an impressive $178 million at the box office worldwide. A few months later, 20th Century Fox released Volcano, which also featured, you guessed it, a volcano. The flick grossed $122 million internationally, proving that the country's thirst for seeing mountains go boom can't be satiated with just one movie. Mm -hmm. So Volcano or Dante's Peak, I didn't write this stuff. It's from the website. I kind of copy and pasted. That's why it's actually good. I, uh, what do you think? I got to go with my man. That's a hard one. Pierce Brosnan okay. and Dante's Peak. Okay. Dante's Peak. What do you, it's, it's Pierce versus Tommy Lee Jones. I know. I, mean, I like both of those movies. Yeah. I, I actually, I enjoyed Dante's Peak because they actually showed people getting boiled alive. Mm -hmm. well, that is true. That was cool. Yeah. I'll say bo both good movies. I feel like these are maybe two that are both you know, both good, where some of the other ones, maybe one's good or, or they're both oh, bad. Oh, Linda Hamilton as well. That's true. That is true. What, what I said, what, the reason why I think Volcano stands a little bit higher for me was just the stakes of Los Angeles. Was there? You, and I like that okay. scene where they put all the cement road blockers to try you, to that divert. That scene was the, great because it showed the community coming together because if you remember, they had a gangster <laughs> who was arrested and troubled by the police and fire department in the early part of the movie. And then in this movie, they're working shoulder to shoulder preventing yeah. this volcano from coming into their neighborhood. I remember that scene. <laughs> that was ridiculous. It apparently stuck with you. It was very meaningful. It was. Oh, Is that what has inspired you to do teamwork with people of all background and race? Yeah, and and no, you just don't judge people. You work together if you so, don't, you know. Well, you only, you don't judge people in, if there's a volcano. Otherwise, you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what true. I, that's what that's I very took. very true, yeah. Yeah, if there's a volcano, you don't, but otherwise you do. Uh, I mean, both good movies. I don't know. I feel like Volcano, they, they both had cool stuff. The coolest, the most memorable scene of Dante's Peak for me was like when he filled the water cup up or whatever, mm -hmm. and it was like, it had all like the, it was boiling or had sediment. I guess it wasn't that memorable. But I remember that's how he figured out that the volcano was going to erupt because he like turned, uh, the, turned I thought the faucet it, I on. thought it was when they were at that spring when people were boiled alive. Hey, oh gosh, something's heating up. <laughs> By the way, something's going wrong Because he actually here. catches the kid before yeah. he jumps in. Yeah, I remember that. It's a good scene too. All right, next up. The body like flops up. Oh, yeah. Skeleton. For yeah. the 71st Academy Chris Awards. probably had to do restroom or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Chris missed I that missed scene. it. I was in the bathroom. He was making the bathroom boil. For the 71st Academy Awards, <laughs> the Academy nominated two World War II films for Best Picture and Best Director, while Steven Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan followed the invasion of Normandy on Omaha Beach and the war's Atlantic theater. Terrence Malick's The Thin Red Line focused on the Battle of Guadalcanal in the South Pacific. Saving Private Ryan versus Thin Red Line from 1998. Saving Private Ryan. Well, I have to go. Uh, there's a criterion of the Thin Red Line, so I have to go with that. Is there not a criterion of Saving Private Ryan? No. Really? No. And there is one for Thin Red Line. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, while both are good movies, Saving Private Ryan, I feel like when you think about, at least for me, and I don't know what IMDb top one hundred, you know, top one hundred or whatever would say, I feel like Saving Private Ryan is like a top maybe twenty or thirty movie for me. You know, as far as all time, just great, great movies. Is it because Vin Diesel's in it? I think it is because Vin, and he dies. it's that one scene where they walk in the flying V formation through, through that green field. I think that's what really sets it apart for me uh, as far as just. And, the, and for me, it was nice to see Tom Sizemore, you know, yeah. just not in his, in his movie. heyday. Man, yeah. and they just kind of let him go, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, they just let him be full Tom Sizemore. He's a severe addict, right? Tom Sizemore? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you mean severe? I, I guess. I guess. I mean, I think you're an addict. You're an addict. I haven't, I haven't researched it lately, but I thought, I th and I think this was kind of a movie. Didn't he kind of have a after this? It was kind of a. Yeah. a I thought he's out. always had a falling out. I really did. Like I never. I there might have been like in the '80s where he was in a, like a bunch of good movies that I missed because I wasn't. I was born in like mid '80s. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I never knew him to be like a Tom Hanks or something like that, where he just. Well, no. I don't think he was ever trying to be a Tom Hanks. <laughs> well, I meant more. He's like in a Tom bunch Sizemore of. He's in a big. bunch of good movies. <laughs> yeah. in a bunch of yeah. good movies. Okay, I don't think he ever had a run like that. But Saving Private Ryan uh, yeah. for me, no, maybe if, whether or not there's a criterion, I can't tell you. But uh, I just feel like that one maybe stands the test a little bit better uh, as far as what I don't know what sticks in memory, what seems like a great one. All right, and again, I'm always right, so that's the that's the answer. Uh, okay, so this one they didn't have a great little blur, but basically just two movies about Mars. Uh, mission to Mars is a rescue mission where they're trying to save a crew. Red Planet, they're trying to save the Earth. These are both from the year 2000. From the year 2000. I didn't see either one of those movies, but I'm going to pick Mission to Mars. Okay. I'm trying to remember because there's Dick, like, both of these are like right up your alley. Like, like, like there's, but there were several Mars movies around that time, like within the three year period. Well, probably because there was, there was, uh, what was that? Zombies on Mars with Ice T. Okay, well, that, that maybe doesn't count. <laughs> no, it's something. <laughs> Ghosts of Mars. Ghosts of Mars. Yes. That's what we got, Ice-T. Uh, it's like Dracula of Mars. Yeah, or, I think. Uh, I mean, there was some, something like that. I, I would have to go with the Disney version. Of Mission, yeah, Mission, Mission to Mars. Mars. Mission to Mars was a little bit better. They were both just terrible. But this was Mission to Mars, I would say, was a little bit better. I think the cast was better on Mission to Mars. Red Planet had some actors, but uh, anyways. Wasn't Val Kilmer in Red Planet? Yeah, yeah. M- because I might have make, make, mixed all these movies up. Well, that was the other thing. I had to go through and, like, watch the trailers for all of them. Because, mm-hmm. seriously, for, like, Volcano and Dante's Peak, I had to, like, remember which one. See, I know one. the difference between that one. Because oh, that has wow. Tommy Lee Jones in it, man. Well, I did remember Tommy Lee Jones. But, like, the plot he, the plot he, points. You know what I love about Tommy Lee Jones and the movie season? They always try to write in a romantic character for him. And like, every time in any movie, it's just Stonewall. Like, I go, <laughs> there's just no way, like, this woman likes him this much. <laughs> so the guy, like, doesn't give off anything. <laughs> he does not have much romantic appeal, no, right? Not at all. I wonder what he's like in real life. He may, maybe he's a charmer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a dream boat. Let's hope. All right. <clears throat> Next up, this is what it starts with. Warning. This might get confusing. In 2011, Paramount Pictures and Screen Gems released two rival movies about casual sex. The first was released in January <laughs> and was originally titled Friends with Benefits, but then was renamed No Strings Attached after director Ivan Reitman and screenwriter Elizabeth Merriweather learned a similar movie with the title, Friends with Benefits, was going to be released later in the year. In July, that film was released and boasted a similar plot featuring two friends having casual love and making casual love and later falling in actual love. So basically, No Strings Attached was originally going to be called Friends with Benefits, but they learned that there was another movie called Friends with Benefits, so they changed it to No Strings Attached. Both were in 2011. No Strings Attached is the one that had Natalie Portman and Ashton Kutcher. Friends with Benefits had Mila Kunis and Justin Timberlake. And these two plots are identical for all for all intents yeah but it's really who do we like seeing exactly so, so 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 that's the question you know, actually i will i was surprised i have seen both of these movies just to let you guys know i was surprised nally portman was in yeah because it was it was there's some humor in it that i just didn't think nally portman i don't know what it is about nally portman but she's just not and did she like, did she go to like yale or something she's like smart well, I don't, I don't think it's about like her how smart she is. It's more about her presentation, like the Friends with Benefits with Mila Kunis. Like that to me was a good rom com movie. Yeah, because it was somewhat oh, we're watching hot people, and it's funny. That's and a, but Natalie Portman's like she's been in like she's Jackie serious. Kennedy like, or no, whatever. No, yeah. Have you seen No Strings Attached? Yeah, I've seen both. All like right. she, that movie was I saw, actually. I saw them within like three months of each other and was confused that, about how this could have possibly that happened. That movie didn't have a lot of the comedy. Yeah. That it First need- of Benefits was funnier. Yes. And so I was like really confused by like watching the movie with the significant other. I was like, I just don't, I just don't care. I don't care if they get together. But in the romantic comedy, at least at the time's passing because you're laughing. Yeah. The other one, I'm like, man, Ashley Kusher just sucks. Uh, do you see either of these, Chris? I, I Yeah, I saw the uh, Friends with Benefits. I oh, think- then you saw both of them. That's perfect. Right, yeah. So I, I really like Justin Timberlake. I guess in general, not the yeah. music, but I like, I like his personality. I like his music. I like, I'm a fan. I'm a JT guy. And I think Mila Kunis, uh, I'm not a huge fan of hers, but she's uh, far funnier than Natalie Portman, obviously. Well, unless you saw the Saturday Night Live, Natalie Portman. That's that was true. Pretty good. That's true. I like that song she yeah. did. That was mm-hmm. pretty good. So you can check that out on the YouTube. Okay. You know she made a reprise too, right? No. Check it out. Okay. Well, anyways, do you have a pick? Me? Yeah. A Friends with Benefits. Oh, okay. Well, you yeah. didn't say that. You just... You just said that you don't yeah, know. Yeah, he did. He goes, I want to go with Friends of Benefits. You said, I've only seen Friends of Benefits. I, I, I don't recall what I'm saying. Look, I Play am, the tape. Hey, Roll the tape. I am not in a congressional hearing right 
I'll have to get uh, back okay. to you. Well, I would say Friends of Benefits was for me, I, although I, Natalie Portman's my girl, Friends of Benefits was more on brand, I would say, more on, you know, tone or anything like that. All right, quickly through the last two, Illusionist and The Prestige, both from 2006. Oh, yeah. They were both uh, about magicians, kind of, you know, period pieces set in the same time. One had Edward Norton. One had uh, Greatest Showman. What's his name? Uh, Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. What do you think? And Christian Bale. And Christian Bale. That's true. Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale. Illusionist versus The Prestige. Let, let me just say this. Both of those movies are fantastic. Okay. They are both great. Um, I think if you watch either one, you're going to be very pleased. But uh, I'm going to go with Prestige. I think it had more. It's also Christopher Nolan, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So it, it just, is. It just, it just seemed to be. Uh, Illusionist is a much quieter film. Yeah. Much more subtle film, and I, I just like the plot of Prestige. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, Dick, what you think? I don't even remember watching Illusionist, but I do remember Edward Norton in it. Yeah. I mean, the Prestige definitely had a better cast. Yeah. So would, it, it had the hook at the it had a definite hook at the end so what i would say about the illusionist was in general it was kind of forgettable i, I remember yeah. watching it and liking it but on thinking back i remember pretty vividly the plot of the prestige illusionist kind of fades to memory kind of what you're saying yeah so for that reason i think movies being able to stick with you i think is an important mm -hmm. quality of a good movie and i'll watch that one over and over again it's, so, it's really good yeah, yeah really really good last one we're not gonna do it mirror mirror or snow white and the huntsman oh yeah the, those movies they're both those, awful those, neither fantastic yeah you're losing on either one yeah. criterions all the way all right but anyways it's just it's just funny how you can go through this list movie after movie where in one year they'll pick almost it's like these theater they, they just compete you know i mean marvel dc we're seeing it now one's obviously winning and the other is definitely losing but that was based off other ips though like they, you had, they have their own unique script yeah but i mean it's both like oh you have a superhero movie well we're gonna make a super i mean which I, they've had superhero movies for forever yeah. i guess that's the worst example well now it's just becoming like in star wars gets thrown into it now because they're making like three star wars movies a year now compete yeah. with marvel well exactly. they're trying to do the own they're their own Even though they're the same company i think all right, right well for next week we're gonna give away two tickets to the grand theater and here is how you can win so Isle of Dogs is in theaters right now, the new Wes Anderson quirky mm -hmm. comedy. I don't really love Wes Anderson, uh, full disclosure, uh, but I thought, you know. Oh, you like him? No, I'm in like with him. Yeah, no, okay. I don't really like him or love him. There's a couple older Wes Anderson's okay. It's just to this point where, I don't know, I see, I still will go see his stuff. Life Aquatic, that's the only one I like. It's so like, I don't know, it's like such like a hipster thing where everyone like thinks that it's greater than it is, I guess. I don't know. But so here's, here's a point, case in point, why I don't love Wes Anderson. I was doing some research to find some trivia about him because of Isle of Dogs, it felt on point. And the first four articles that I found that had like interesting facts about him had the word whimsy in the title. All, oh. all four, four different articles all had the word whimsy. Like, oh, 12 facts about Wes Anderson that are whimsical. Or, oh, yeah. 13 reasons why Wes Anderson is whimsy. You know, and I'm like, this is <laughs> stupid. I can't handle it. But I did find a fact. So here's gonna be the question for next week. In the Fantastic Mr. Fox, don't answer this, Chris. I won't. In the Fantastic Mr. Fox, what does the movie do to make cursing more family friendly? There's a specific tactic they employ, something they do every time the characters are going to curse that makes it more family friendly. It's kind of a funny little thing that they do in that movie. So check it out. Maybe watch the movie. I, I recommend watching Fantastic Mr. Fox. That's a, that's a good Wes Anderson movie. But uh, check that out. Uh, for two weeks from now, we're going to be doing a live show or, or a show off on location, right? No, yeah, not live. The, the community movie we're going to be watching is Rampage. Rampage. I'm so excited with The Rock. Yeah. Uh, that's the community movie that everyone needs to watch for the last Thursday show. Yeah. And then we'll review it. And we're, we're actually at, at the theater, at the uh, Grand Theater. Movies never tasted so good. Mm, movies mm, have mm, mm, So uh, if, you're, if you're around, though, it, it's, what do we do? It's around, you know, three or something ish. Yeah, Sunday. We're yeah, going to do it we're Sunday gonna go the see, 22nd. We're going to see Sunday the 22nd. We're going to go see the movie, the first showing of yeah, the day. On the 22nd. On the 22nd of Sunday, and then go. And we're going to do the, the podcast in, it's going to be recorded, but it'll be in the theater, in the yep, lobby, yep. on the 22nd, around 3 p.m. So if you want to come to the theater and say what's up, we'll be there. That'd be kind of cool if, if somebody showed up that listened to the show and yeah. said hi. And uh, we'll be talking about Rampage. So maybe, if you've seen it, maybe you can come by, maybe we'll give you like a 30 seconds to to say what you think about Rampage. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But anyways, uh, we got ticket giveaways next week. We'll be doing more good stuff. As always, uh, so, so come tune in to the Ticket Stub. Like, tell a friend so the show can continue to grow. For Dick, for Chris, I'm Connor. We're signing off on the Ticket Stub. Is that all you got? Thank you for checking out this production of Lone Star Community Radio. 
Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station. Don't forget to check out this show and many others across the Lone Star Community Radio Network. Either live on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, the Lone Star Internet Radio app, or IRLoneStar.com's live audio stream, and on replay on podcast, Channel 12, Our City TV in Conroe, or Channel 21, KVQT in Houston, and of course, their YouTube channel. This production is copyrighted and all rights are reserved by Lone Star Community Radio. Have a question regarding this program or other Lone Star Community Radio shows? Want to sponsor or start your own show? Call the station message line at 936-647-3776 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.